Sybil's uniquely high throughput and uniquely small volume. So um, that's one of the major pushes at our beamline from a while back. And we think that we can eventually use two or three or four needles uh, and drop the times down to 30 minutes per 40 samples and pick up smaller volumes. But right now we're asking for 30 microliters and two hours. All right, and so uh, as part of the uh, package, you'll get, you'll get images of your sample. So this is several loads of GFP being brought into the needle. This is the needle landing in front of the X-ray beam. The X-ray beam is going straight into the sample cell. So you get pictures like this. And this is the buffer minus sample for something like 40 GFPs or something like that. And of course the sample happened to be aggregated. So there's a little bit of imperfection. But anyway, we get, we've gotten pretty good repeatability. Um, in this mode where we're doing static SACs, uh, basically everything is at a time resolved measurement now, right? So with uh, static SACs, you can't predict ahead of time when radiation damage will happen. So um, what we do is we expose your sample for 10 full seconds, but we frame it at 0.3 second or 0.2 second intervals. So that means that you end up with 50 or 30 frames. Um, and that means that you can go through those frames and decide when radiation damage happened, when the scattering profile is changing because it's been hit by so many x-rays. Okay, so that's static SACs. And again, we've got good, um, it's basically ability to time resolve and Mikel is gonna talk about uh, SEC coupled SACs. Um, there have been issues with this new system that we're still working on and working towards and um, you know, improvements to be made. And that's, um, you know, we usually ask you to send us a buffer before your samples and a buffer after your samples. And we can subtract either from that same sample and get a scattering profile and compare the two and make sure they agree. And sometimes that doesn't agree. So I'm gonna show you examples where it doesn't agree on purpose. Hopefully you don't have this. Hopefully you've got mostly things that agree, but occasionally you won't. So, uh, here's uh, buffer one subtracted from the samples black, buffer two subtracted from the samples red, they disagree. Um, so here uh, you want to um, either, either take the average if you want, and again, this is on a log scale, right? So what appears to be a big difference on a log scale out here is like, you know, photons differences. So they're not that big a difference, um, although it appears so on a log scale. But, um, you know, saying if you don't know, if you're unsure, you could take the average. Or uh, if you're an expert in SACs, you could, uh, or you have like uh, models that you can calculate the SACs from, you will be able to dif differentiate how this should decay. Um, another thing to look out for is bubbles. And again, I mentioned that you'll get a uh, folder with uh, images of your sample cell and you can see if there's a bubble. So make sure you do that. And then occasionally you get small Q issues, some disagreement in the small Q. And that's just been a little persistent. Our, our beam is, is moving, there's some vibration in the system. So just this small amount of movement will cause small Q issues. Um, again, uh, you could uh, clip this data off at 0.01 and uh, take the average of the two if you were unsure or, or truncated all the way back to 0.02 if you wanted to, that to the point where they disagree, they agreed. Or in this case, I know for a fact, you know, for sure that this red curve is non-physical -phys features. It, a scattering curve should not have like these sharp changes. So I know that the black curve is a better one to deal with, but you'll have to make some decisions. Um, so yeah, here's uh, you also in your packages, you'll get a uh, set of averaged results. So um, I'm gonna go through someone's plate sort of in movie format. Uh, let's see here if I can push the play. So these are scattering curves, buffer one, buffer two. And underneath them, you'll see that there's four curves, buffer one, buffer two, but you also see the first five and all of the, uh, of the frames and all of the frames together. And you can see some that has high Q problems. And, you know, again, it just gives you a perspective on your data collection. All right. 
So that's uh, things to look out for in your packages that we send you. Um, we, uh, there is a uh, full write-up of what you should put in a paper for SACS. It's in this 2017 publications guidelines. Um, and this is really intended for when you're submitting like one single SACS curve as part of it. There's all these tables that fill, fill out, um, and this is kind of what they look like. If you're collecting data in hot, true high throughput and you're doing constructs or you're doing um, um, drug screening, obviously you're not going to fill this out for every SACS curve. Um, so, um, but you know, if you're going to publish just uh, and they're going to cite this paper on you, you know, in that paper. There's a clause in there that says, you know, this is for if you're going to use high throughput screening, you don't really need to do all these things and that they're guidelines and they're not intended to restrict your publication. So, um, you know, you know, if you don't have every little bat at last uh, spot of this information, um, no problem in, in general. But it's it's a really good. Um, aspirational kind of paper, like the things to think about when you're analyzing and, and reporting data. Uh, the advice I have is really to make sure that, um, you know, you've got good values for your RG, your flexibility and mass, um, to extract RG in the multiple ways and make sure that they agree. Uh, if you have something that comes out to be flexible, uh, you use a parameter that measures flexibility, you should be able to toss your sequence into secondary structure prediction and see some flexibility there. And then the mass you extract from SAC should be within 10% of what your expected mass should be. So those are all quality control parameters you can apply uh, to your data.